Hello everyone and welcome back. Now in the past two videos we've been introduced to neural networks. First we learned the theoretical basis, that is universal function approximation theorems, and then we saw some real sort of basic implementation of neural networks on the computer using ideas like backpropagation to train these things. Now so far we haven't done anything with dynamics, right? The only thing that we learned on a neural network is take some data and approximate a little quadratic two-dimensional function. In this video lecture, I want to start talking about how we can specifically apply neural networks to dynamical systems problems, okay? And I want to start with a really, really easy idea, one that goes back as long as at least dynamical systems goes back. We could even argue this goes back to Newton. And that is that if I give you some data, can you tell me what will happen in the future? Can you forecast that data? Can you predict that data, right? So let's actually formalize this. Imagine I give you snapshots. Now we have talked about snapshots before in this lecture series. We saw snapshots when we talked about dynamic mode decomposition and when we talked about the Cindy method and many other pieces in between. A snapshot is just an instance of data, okay? Typically an instance in time. These could be very high dimensional vectors. Let's assume they're real valued, they're d-dimensional. You know, they could be instances of, of the pressure of a fluid, for example, or they could just be states of the system. You know, these could be uh, the Lorenz components, x, y, z. And really what you would like to know is if I have historical data, snapshots, what comes next? Well, of course, we could assume that there's some sort of function that lies underneath this. And if we did that assumption, we could, for example, use the Cindy method. So let's assume, okay, so assume that there exists a function, I'll say from RD into RD, such that you have this sort of stepping scheme. If you want to know what happens next, you just plug it into the function. So that is, assume that this is governed by a discrete time dynamical system. And of course, if we assume enough regularity on this thing, okay, so for example, if it's a continuous function, maybe a smooth function, uh, maybe way too much to ask, but if it's an analytic function, for example, then there are universal approximation theorems that can tell us that there are neural network architectures that can approximate this thing. So here's the approach, right? Approach. We are going to approximate F, which is unknown, with a neural network. All right. Feels very modern, doesn't it? But in some sense, this is just an old idea, right? We have a new function that we might be using to, to forecast the dynamics, but we already learned about this, right? Koopman does this uh, through extended dynamic mode decomposition and the kernel methods. Cindy does this, right? Th this is a question that is probably as old as engineering, right? Can I predict the future kind of thing? Or can I, can I say what's gonna happen? You know, if I know the, the weather, if I have historical data on the weather, can I predict it for the next couple days? Well, then we know what we've seen at least so far is that neural networks are really sort of defined by their loss functions, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set, set up a standard neural network where our neural network is basically gonna do this. It's gonna take a data point in, I'm gonna feed it into a neural network and the output will be what happens next in time, right? And if I do this correctly, or if I, if I train this in the right way, this should basically be what F is uh, trying to do, okay? And again, F is unknown, so I don't really have anything to compare to. All I know is what goes in, what goes out, okay? So then how can I do this? Well, let's say, let, let's denote the neural network as G, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we could set up a loss function and the loss function should match the neural network predictions to the true next state, okay? So how are we gonna do this? 
mean square error again. We saw this in the previous video. We're going to set up a loss function that looks like this. Loss function is going to be, so here, I'm going to take a mean square error, and I'm going to say that if I put a data point into my neural network, this should be as close as possible to the next data point. Okay, So if I put x1 into the neural network, uh, it should be very close to x2. If I put x2 into the neural network, it should be very close to x3, and so on and so forth. And of course, you want to do this over every single data point, right? Because I'm using all of the information that I'm given here. So n is going to go from 1 all the way up to capital N minus 1. And just to sort of normalize the loss here, I'm going to use a, a 1 over the number of data points, right? So that this thing can be sort of compared if you have varying values of, of n here, right? So just a sort of normalization constant, but again, minimization won't matter. Uh, this value, this value won't matter. So that's one way you could do this, right? Just set up a black box that pushes you forward, and it is just trying to match inputs to outputs based on the information you provided. Classic application of a neural network. But here's something that I want to explore. We can exploit the dynamics of the system. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's more here, right? So let's think about the actual dynamics because right here, this is just matching a function to its, uh, its input to its output, right? This is basically what we did in the previous video. There's nothing really taking advantage of the fact that these, these are dynamic, right? They're sequential snapshots. Let's think about this though. Uh, let's say x2 is clearly f of x1, right? And similarly, x3 is f of x2, but that's the same as f of f of x1, right? So, okay, that's, that's interesting. So if I put x1 into the neural network, this should approximately give me x2. Then, if I do this again, if I take x2 and put it in the neural network, it should give me x3. So that means that, sure, right, so this, this right here is going to be approximated by uh, the neural network of x1 should be approximately equal to x2. But then this right here should also be, okay, well, it's the neural network of x2 should be approximately x3, but also... If I feed the initial data point back into the neural network, this should give me x3, right? So I put x1 in, I get a number out. I take that number, I put it in, and I get x3. Now I'm bootstrapping information. This becomes a what's called a recurrent neural network. You are taking the output and using it as the input, right? And in general, what you should be able to do is you should be able to say that so for the neural network, if you take S compositions, so here G to the power of S, this is, this is a composition operator. If you're familiar with dynamical systems, you'll know this very well, um, or, or notation at least. If I, apply, if I take a data point, uh, sorry, Xn, pardon me, and I apply the neural network to it S times, this should approximately step me s steps that's why i'm using s here s for steps units into the future right so that gives me more information that i can bootstrap here right because i don't have to just use the neural network to predict one step into the future i could use the neural network to step any number of steps into the future so what i could do is i could build dynamics into the neural network right this is just matching inputs and outputs but if i do this right here i'm building dynamical information the fact that these are sequential right x1 led to x4 eventually i'm building that into the network and here's what i could do instead all right i could define a, a loss function that looks like this okay so 
I'm going to normalize by the number of steps I want to take into the future. I'm going to use capital S here. I'm going to take all possible steps into the future from 1 to capital S. And then I'm going to do uh, 1 over the number of data points times the sum. And here I have n equal 1 to capital N minus S. So these, these are sort of telescoping sums. And then I've got this, but it's also including information going into the future. G of S of Xn minus X of N plus S. And then mean square. Does that make sense? Do you see that, right? I am stepping information forward into the future. If I apply the neural network here, G, I should go one step. But if I apply G twice, I should go two steps. If I apply G three times, I should go three steps. And by building in the sequential information, we are building in the dynamic structure of the data. And in some sense, you know, uh, giving us more sort of correlation along the time series here in order to move forward. Let's take a look at a simple example that I coded up. Now you'll notice I'm no longer using MATLAB. I actually switched over to Python here. And the main reason for this is because there are excellent software packages that can build and train neural networks in Python. And so in particular, I'm going to use TensorFlow 2, uh, but of course you could use JAX or PyTorch or one of the other uh, fantastic suites and software packages uh, at your pleasure. Now, the important piece here is that most of the details are sort of hidden underneath in this software package, which means, as we saw in the last video, I don't have to program this myself, right? Very, very smart people have built in automatic differentiation and backpropagation to make these things work very, very quickly. Compare that to the last video where you saw me build it from scratch, by hand, you know, there was a lot of room for improvement here, right? I'm not a computer scientist, I just play one on TV. So here, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and forecast data from the Heenan map, okay? So the Heenan map is a classic uh, non-linear discrete time dynamical system that exhibits chaotic dynamics. And here's how we're gonna do it, okay? So I'm gonna use, as I said, I'm gonna use TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2.0 in particular uh, with Keras built into it. Uh, I'm going to use NumPy, and then I want to plot my results with matplotlib. Here's my definition of the, the Heenan map here. So to go one step forward in space, it's a two-dimensional dynamical system. Basically, you have something like a logistic map in the first variable, uh, where you have a little bit of a, a sort of forcing term from the second variable, and then the, the uh, second variable is really just this sort of linear term, right? So you can think of this as sort of like a two-dimensional logistic map. That's one way to think about it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an initial condition starting from the point one zero, and I'm going to forecast it uh, 1,000 points into the future, 1,001 in this case. Um, and then what I would like to do is I'd like to try and learn the time stepper, and I'm going to try and figure out, I'm going to see, compare my neural network that learns the stepping through space. We're both going to start from the initial, same initial condition, and I'm going to use the neural network to sort of see how well I can match up with the data that this has given to me. And so here we go. Let's generate up the data. Here's the heat and attractor plotted in x1, x2 space. What this really is, is, is sort of, it's one long curve that's sort of folded back and forth over itself. You can kind of see this here. Um, you know, I, I have big points in here, so you can't see all the fine structure. Usually these things, you know, they're very, very complicated. These, this is chaos. We're talking about the fractals here. Um, but nonetheless, I think you get the point. It's a chaotic attractor. It's got this sort of banded structure to it. And here's my, um, my initialization of the, the neural network. So I'm going to use a, a neural network with four layers. So that's four compositions. And each layer is going to have a width of 20, right? So again, go back and, and th think about what we defined in the previous video where we talked about layers and widths of neural networks. These are parameters that you choose at the beginning. You can choose different values for these. Uh, if you choose larger values, it's going to take longer to train. Uh, these are just the ones that I sort of settled on because they give good enough results, right? But I'll show you some, some uh, trained uh, results here in a moment. These are all going to be dense layers, if that means anything to you, if you're coming at this with a machine learning background. And here I'm going to define my loss. So here I'm going to go over the number of steps that I define. 
I believe uh, for steps, I'll define that uh, in the next piece here. I think I used, okay, I used two steps forward in time. So I'm using information going one step forward and two step forward, capital S is equal to two in that loss function I showed you. Um, but this is just building up the loss function uh, over the steps going forward in time. Here we're setting up the, the gradient of the dynamical system. Um, and now we're gonna train it using the Atom uh, Stochastic Gradient Descent Optimization. So again, uh, these are all packages that are built into TensorFlow. I'm not gonna go into detail on these things. Uh, for me, I really care about the dynamical systems, but of course, if you're gonna use it, you should really understand it as well. Um, and let's take a look. So here we go, here's the loss function being spit out. Loss function is quite small here. We're talking 10 to the minus five. It's going really, really fast. Uh, again, if I coded this up by hand and it was like in the previous video, it would be very, very slow. This is all that beautiful optimization uh, that's built into the TensorFlow package here. Like 12 seconds, we got a loss of 10 to the minus six. So the question is, how good is this? Okay, so here's this chunk of code that you're seeing on the screen here is the neural network starting with the same initial condition that the data starts with and we're going to see we're going to try and track these things forward in time to see how close they match each other so here we go here's the so this is just the x1 coordinate over the number of data uh, steps here is the first second red i believe is the neural network black is the data so we're getting about three of them that are very very good the fourth one is start, or sorry, the, the fifth one is starting to fall off, the sixth one, and then you can see a little bit of a divergence, and then by the time you get to about 15 steps, this is junk. Now, what I want you to understand here is that this is just one application. When you are training neural networks, you should be tuning over a range of hyperparameters, widths, layers, steps, etc. Uh, and also running these things multiple times because it's using stochastic gradient descent. You can find local minima even for the same hyperparameters. So this is just one run, not a particularly good one. Let me show you a good one though. Here, uh, this is for uh, the, the parameters. Uh, if, you, if you saw the Heenan map, B in this case was 0 0.01. So effectively what we're predicting is the logistic map. It's sort of very like one dimensional chaos here. But take a look at how good these predictions are. The top row here is using one step of information in the loss function. The middle row, two steps. The bottom row, three steps. Take a look at that. I mean, by the time you get to the bottom row, you can't even tell the difference between the neural network and the, uh, the actual data. We're talking 30 steps that are lying almost exactly on top of each other, right? And the computations of these errors are all in the book if you want to take a look at them. Now, for the heat and attractor I showed you, in the previous example, that B parameter was 0.3. The chaotic attractor becomes much more robust. There's more sort of folding over itself. And the components, X1 and X2, become much more complicated. And so here what I'm showing you again are neural network projections, trained neural network predictions, one step into the future at the top, two steps, three steps, four steps into the loss function. First thing you should notice, Four steps does the best because it's using the most information going sort of uh, backwards and forwards in this recurrent neural network structure. Moreover, if you take a look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe, uh, nine if you count it, steps that are forecast very well. In this case, the Lyapunov time associated to the um, to the heat and nap map is between two and three steps. So we're talking about two to three Lyapunov times of predictions. Now Lyapunov time is usually the, the standard time scale of which prediction can be made. So we're doubling or tripling this standard time scale for a very chaotic system just using these neural networks. And again, it's very possible that you can optimize the, the neural network structure and you can build in more information if you have it in order to do even better. Now this is a very simple, basic application of neural networks. When we come back in the next video, we're gonna look at a, a modern application that is called physics-informed neural networks. So I'll see you all in the next video, everybody.